Hello my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me Mark from Dadex and today we're going to take a look on the test server at the information on the new Navy issue exploration frigates. So here we are with a selection of information screens for the Tech 1 exploration frigates and the Navy issue counterparts. As with the video yesterday on the battle cruisers, you can simulate these ship fittings on the test server. You can't actually get the ships and get in and fly the ships as yet. They're not here. And some of them haven't even got pictures yet. There you go. And as I said yesterday, the details are to be confirmed. So these are not 100% finalized at all. Now, the changes to these guys can be summed up a little bit easier than the uh, battle cruisers because basically they all get more, more DPS, they get more tank and Probably most significantly, they can all fit an extended core probe launcher, which means you can then launch combat probes to scan ships down directly um, and have a, a workable fit. You can squeeze an extended launcher onto a Tech 1 exploration frigate, but you'll have to be either literally flying with little else in the fit or switching a lot of your modules off, which I've showed you to do out in space. I do have Heron's the Amigas fly with an extended launcher on that I can kind of switch on and off while still be able to actually go up to sites and hack etc. Alphas, just because of their fitting skills, can't do that. Anyway, back to this stuff. We're going to start off with the probe today, the Minmatar flavour. And as we probably all know, the basic bonuses on the Tech 1 per level of Minmatar frigate skill was 7.5% to core and combat scanner probe strength and a 6% reduction in salvage duration. And the roll bonus was a straight 5% bonus to Relic and Analyzer virus strength. Now the Navy version keeps the scanning and the hacking bonuses, so it can still do all that just as well. I'm getting notifications of somebody outside hacking the ESS while I'm on the t in the test server. Got to learn somewhere. We're now getting a 12.5% bonus to light missile and rocket rate of fire. So that's going to be DPS, but due to the amount of missiles you're spitting. And with level 5 of the frigate skill, you're looking at a what, 62.5% bonus there. The roll bonus for each of the ships now is a 99% reduction in scan probe launcher CPU requirement, which means you can fit that extended probe launcher. I think they take 220 TF of your CPU, which is almost all of one of these frigates. You're obviously going to get that discount on a regular probe launcher as well, which might mean you have a lot more flexibility elsewhere in your fit. But really, I think that's going to be a case of now being able to use these, not just as explorers, but also as much more effective hunters. Battle herons, etc., of course, have always been a thing, but they were fits that you had to build specifically to fight. You couldn't have the hacking here. Potentially, you might be able to get away with having a bit more of a fight about you and still be able to go about your regular business or, of course, just switch to fit over depending on your mood and the circumstances. With just two or three modules maybe switched over. If we go into the attributes, the hit points I've actually had a look earlier. The Tech 1 Pro has 825 hit points across the structure, armour and shield. The Navy Issue gets 1450, so that's quite a bit more tank. The Fleet Issue Probe actually has 525 points of armour and 525 points of shield. So you've got a bit of flexibility there. We'll have a look at the slot layout in a minute. There are no drones on the Navy Issue Probe. You'll see there is no drone bait whatsoever. If we look down at the navigational stats, well, first of all, the capacitor stats are exactly the same as are the navigational stats. Though actually our base speed is increased by 25 meters a second so we can get into pew range quicker and we get in an extra point of scanner strength. Although, of course, when the numbers are this small, that's like 10%, that's over 10%. <laughs> that can cost a lot of risk in this game. Uh, fitting wise, CPU goes down by 40. But that's more than offset by the CPU discount on the core probe launcher itself. And power grid's going up from 25 to 40, so that's quite good. In terms of slots, we get an extra high slot on the Navy issue ship. But we've still got the choice of two launcher slots or two turret slots on the Tech 1 and the Navy version. I think that's about it for the probe fleet issue. I've probably called it Navy issue a few times there. You know what I mean. These are the Navy issue frigates. The others are all Navy issue. I can't go wrong. <laughs> I think actually in yesterday's video I did refer to the test server as Tranquility. It is of course Singularity, just to clarify. Nobody commented though. Anyway, on to the Heron. Now, I do spend quite a lot of time in Herons. I like Herons. In fact, I do have a Heron in a wormhole. My PC's a bit ill and unstable. I'm not risking a Heron with half a billion isks worth of loot in it. With that instability when I'm recording, I'm happy doing these kind of videos of course. And I'll potter around quite happily, but not that, no. 
So we'll be back to the wormhole soon. For those of you still looking out for the next instalment of Alpha's Wormhole Van Life, it will be here soon, I promise. Anyway, the Heron. In fact, all the Tech 1 holes get the same bonuses, don't they? Yep, they do. The Scanner Probes, the Salvager, and the Relic and Data Analyzer. So down here, with the Heron Navy issue, it has the addition of a 30% bonus to light, missile, and rocket damage. Much much more than the 12 and a half percent bonus to rate of fire the probe fleet issue is getting we'll have a look when we look up some fit screens and the same reduction in the roll bonus for the core scanner launcher fitting so again combat probes all round on to the attributes the tech one heron's got 800 hit points total the navy issue heron's got 1400 so same kind of jump in tank same proportion of increase and very little else changes. Again, we're now five meters a second quicker on grid. Got the same sensor strength. All the other navigational and capacitor stats are the same. There is no drone bay in the Navy issue Heron. It is just those rockets. On the fitting screen for the Heron, again, we've got a reduction in overall CPU output, but we need much less for the probe launcher. 50% increase in power grid. An additional top slot again and two launcher slots among those top slots. So still five mid slots, two bottom slots, three rig slots, one extra high slot. Be interesting to see how this compares with a battle heron with blasters, but with those bonuses, I mean level five frigger, which this alt got, as 150% bonus to the rocket damage. Let's have a look after we've reviewed the rest. If you stay till the end, we'll have a quick look at a test fit on the heron. Imacus, again same bonuses for the tech one, won't go through those again, but now we've got a small hybrid turret damage bonus of 7.5% per level of the skill, but also a 10% bonus to drone hit points and tracking speed. So you want to be using both, we're not going to get a truly ferocious blaster Imacus out of this, although it might be uh, quite hot. So if we look at the attribute screen, let's have a look what's going on drone bay wise. The drone bay is increased in size, we can get two more light drones in there, but we can still only fly four with the Imacus, but we do have some very nice turret damage to go with it. Hit points wise, the Imacus, the tankiest of the Tech 1 exploration frigates, has 875 hit points total. The Navy issue Imacus has 1550. Quite a tanky little boy for what he is. And then as per before, very little change down the bottom of the screen we've got one extra point of sensor strength and we've got 15 meters a second faster on grid but capacitor and other targeting and such stats all the same as per the tech one model and then on the fitting screen for the Imacus, we got the same thing again quite a huge 70 drop in the cpu output there but again i don't think that'll be a problem but we'll have a look when we try some fits power grid output up two turret slots amongst the three high power slots the same as before we've got four mid slots we've got an extra low slot for dps stroke tank but only having three high slots means it can't have its two turrets a probe launcher and a cloak at the same time whereas the heron and the probe navy issues could sorry fleet issue probe um so there's something to consider and that's it for the Imacus. So it's the only one of the Navy issue exploration frigates that is going to be wanting to put out drones. In fact, it's the only one that can. And it's bonus for them. So yeah, a combo of turrets and drone action for the Imacus. And the most hit points of all four of the frigates. And then over to the Amar Magnate. And it gets the addition of 20% bonus to small energy turret damage per skill level of Amar frigate and the same additional roll bonus to allow it to fit the extended probe launcher. Attributes wise, again the hit points go up, in fact they double here between these two ships. 750 on the Magnet. Magnet Navy issue gets 1500. The drone bay has gone completely, again that seems to be quite a common thing apart from the Imacus, which is now the drone boat of the gang. And one extra sensor strength, 10% increased whopping, and exactly the same speed. Let's look on the fitting screen. Same pattern, a drop in CPU output, but that's okay. We're actually getting extra low slots, so up to five low slots on the magnet. So um, some DPS 
tank options there for the armor tank. Three mid slots is still pretty lame. And we've got three high slots. So as with the Imicus, you can't fit your two turrets, your cloak and your probe launcher. Um, whereas the fleet issue probe and the navy issue heron both could do that. So let's have to think about. As I said at the beginning, these stats, etc. are not set in stone. If you want to shout about anything, now's the time to do it. So, those are the four new Navy frigates, Exploration frigates, as they are on the test server right now. So, we've got the Mimitar and the Kaldari who can cloak and combat scan. We've got the Galante and the Magnate who can't cloak and combat scan. They've all got up DPS, they've all got up tank. It'd be interesting to see how these are going to be used. I hope they're going to be quite cheap. Um, certainly once the price settles down after their introduction. And it looks like they could be quite fun. They're going to be fun to hunt with. Certainly, if you can cloak while you're doing your scanning, that would certainly be helpful. I think if you're being aggressive, the fewer people know you're there, the better for sure. You're obviously going to have to decloak to warp to your prey. No covert ops cloaks are going on these ships. So um, you've got to decloak to get into warp. But please let me know what you think of them, make of them, think you might do with them down in the comment down below and leave your in-game name for a chance at one of the creator skins for the buzzard. As you know, I really do value your input. So I'll get all these windows shut now. In case you don't know how to open multiple windows, just hold shift when you click show info. I don't think the game tells you that, but it's very, very handy. I think you can also do an option so that every time you click show info it just opens a new window automatically. Check it out. Before we go, I did knock up a quick fit on the Heron. It's very much a version 1. Feel free to uh, tell me what you think down below. Just a simple passive tank, a couple of rocket launchers. If we put some Rage rockets in there. We're getting 184 DPS cold, which is not too shabby. We've got 6000 EHP. We can combat scan. And we can cloak while we're doing it. So that's what the Heron's going to look like potentially. It will fit a medium auxiliary shield booster. But you'll have to lose probably the resistances or something. Maybe the Weber. Because you're going to be quite short CPU. I've had to boost the CPU. I've got quite good skills too. This most definitely is not an alpha in here. And there's 0.3 CPU left on this fit. But I just thought I'd just have a little look at what the potential was. So it's not it's not heroic, but it ain't bad for what it is and what else it can do. Obviously, how you want to balance this to actually be doing hacking and scanning is up to you. But you can always fit a mobile depot in its uh, capacious cargo hold and switch your mid-slot modules between the hacking and scanning stuff, cargo scanner, etc. and your fighty stuff. And leave a bit of tank on there too, if you like. Anyway, my friends, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think. It'd be good to actually get in some of these ships and trial them out. Be interesting to hear how we've actually got to uh, get them via some event, so they say. Thanks a lot to all of you who left some feedback on yesterday's video on the battle cruisers. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one just in case you didn't catch it. Uh, there's a bit more kind of variety amongst the battle cruisers. These frigates are all kind of doing the same thing in slightly different ways. I think it's a bit disappointing that they can't all kind of cloak and scan at the same time. I think that maybe should have been something they could all do. But we'll see. Or maybe let me know. I might have missed something there. How the Imacus and the Magnate are going to balance not being able to do that. Uh, what, what their kind of little skill is that if they haven't got that one. But anyway, my friends, we'll leave it there for now. I'll be back very soon. Hopefully the new PC is going to be here in, by the weekend and we'll get some wormhole stuff done. But I'm going to get a, another video up before then anyway, you lucky people. So leave us a like if you've liked it and found this interesting. It really does uh, help the channel out and I just know which content you enjoy more than the other stuff that you don't enjoy. Subscribe if you want to stay in touch. But remember, my friends, even is believing. So for now, fly brave. Take care of yourselves and each other. And from me and my lovely dirty thrasher, goodbye.